Welcome everyone to our Packers News free agency live stream virtually alongside Jim Ozarski. I am Olivia Reiner. It, the, the Packers have been making some moves over the last few days. They did the bulk of their work at the beginning of the week when the legal tampering period opened on Monday by adding inside linebacker Christian Kirksey and right tackle Rick Wagner. However, they made some smaller, still substantial transactions last night. However, before we get to talking about those and some other breaking news, I want to remind you that you can be a part of our conversation over on our Facebook page. Make sure you're in those comments right now. Leave us your questions, leave us your thoughts, and we will get to some of those towards the end of our show. First, Jim, I would like to start with the most recent news that the Rams have released outside linebacker Clay Matthews, former Packer fan favorite, played in Green Bay for 10, year, 10 years. Excuse me, last season with the Rams, he had eight sacks, 37 tackles. Primarily in his career, he's played outside linebacker with the Packers. However, he has played some inside linebacker, and we know the Packers have a need at inside linebacker right now, someone to play alongside Christian Kirksey, possibly. And the Packers only have three outside linebackers on their roster, Jim. Could, how likely is it that Clay Matthews would be an option at outside or inside linebacker for the Packers? Uh, if we're talking about the real world, I don't think it should be very likely at all. Um, clearly, the quarter, if people follow social media, the quarterback, the left tackle, and numerous fans and perhaps media think he should be back. I, I, I mean, there's a reason he left. Um, regardless of a desire to come back a year ago. Um, look, they they signed the Smiths. They drafted Rashawn Gary. Everybody was up in arms last year, Olivia, right about, where's Rashawn Gary? How come he can't play? So you're going to sign a way older guy to once again have your first-round draft pick not play a whole lot? Like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Clay Matthews' skill set to me doesn't fit what this team is anymore. Um so I think this is something for us to talk about and for fans maybe to get riled up about or as former teammates. But I, like, if you're Brian Gutekunst, I don't know what I don't know what that would do for you, to be honest. For That's the okay. 2020 Packers, a little bit of a long shot there, but certainly worth discussing. Let's move on to talking about some of the more recent transactions the Packers actually made yesterday. They brought back tight end Mercedes Lewis on a one-year deal worth $2.25 million. He's entering his 15th season in the NFL. Think about that for a moment. Right. 15 seasons, that's a pretty long time to play in the NFL. And he's had a number of roles over the last, uh, his career. However, most recently with the Packers and under Matt LaFleur's offense, he has served as a blocker um, what, primarily, although he did see his production go up in 2019 from 2018 under Mike McCarthy's offense as well. What can Mercedes Lewis add to the Packers offense in 2020? Uh, <laughs> uh, leadership um, and a guy who knows what he's doing. I, I mean, yeah, he did catch a few more passes. Um, obviously the quarterback loves him um, and he's a great locker room leader, mentor, Honestly, that has been his role the last two years, um, and that's going to continue. I mean, he's not going to catch more than the 15 passes or, or whatever he did this past year. If he does, honestly, Olivia, then the Packers are in trouble. <laughs> um, I mean, if they don't draft or sign you know, a late free agent here, um, it's clearly Jay Sternberger's show, and maybe Robert Tanyan can finally – put something together. But as far as Lewis goes, I think it's really, uh, you know, keep that culture and chemistry going that they built last year. I mean, he was a big part of that. Um, actually, so was Jimmy Graham. And I, I think that's the role. He can still play it a little bit. Um, I don't think Brian Gutekunst would bring him back just to, like, be a coach on the field. But I don't, I don't really foresee any sort of, um, you know, breakout campaign – from the age of Swander. I think what he has done is what he will do. The Packers also brought back safety Will Redmond on a one-year deal. Reportedly, we don't know exactly how much money he's going to be making. However, we can speculate that it, it may be a minimum salary deal. Last season, he played 271 defensive snaps, 36 tackles. What role can Redmond play this upcoming season? 
Yeah, he's you know he, he's interesting um, because he kind of established himself as one of those do everything guys for Mike Pettin. I mean, he was drafted as a cornerback in 2016, uh, one of the fastest guys coming out of I believe it was Mississippi State, right? Um, you know, a knee injury and and I think Mike Pettin found okay he can bulk up a little bit. He's got the ability to play downhill, unafraid to take on bigger guys. Hence the safety change. Um, I think he makes the team, to be honest, and core, as a core special teamer. But, um, no, he's that guy who can do that hybrid stuff, you know, cover receivers. Again, has that corner ability, corner speed. Um, but that, so I, I personally think he's a good fit for the back end of the roster, that 46 man, you know, 40 to 46 man. Um, you know, I, I don't know if a bigger role is coming, obviously, with Savage and Amos, but I think he's one of those just dependable depth guys um, who have a little bit of ability. So the Packers bring back two of those free agents there in Lewis and in Redmond. However, they let inside linebacker B.J. Goodson walk. He was signed by the Cleveland Browns. The Packers picked him up very early on, right before the season started last season. He primarily p- played in that 3-4 base defense of Mike Pettin's. Now that the Packers only have inside linebackers, Christian Kirksey, Oren Burks, Ty Summers, Curtis Bolton on the roster, how likely is it that the Packers add another inside linebacker, whether it's in free agency or the draft? Yeah, I think it's it's a must at this point. I mean, um, you know, you look at Kirksey, has played nine games the last two years. Um Oren Burks played 57 snaps on defense last year. Ty Summers played none. And Curtis Bolton, for as promising as he looked, did tear an ACL last offseason. So you've got a whole lot of question marks at a very important position. And frankly, one that was a problem anyway last year. So, you know, even if they think Kirksey's, you know, hamstring and torn pectoral is – not indicative of, of further issues. Um, you know, I mean, there's a reason he was cut and available, you know, because there was obviously some concern around the league about those things. So, yeah, I, I you know, I don't, there's not a splash name left in free agency, uh, you know, and, and the draft that it's interesting, Olivia, because nothing happens in a vacuum. So like the, the right tackle issue probably means they're going to have to draft one of those guys first or second round which means now you're looking at what second, third, fourth round pick for a linebacker. That's where Oren Burks was. And so, you know, it's a little less certain, you know what I mean? When you stack needs like this at starting positions. So um, I can see, I mean, look, they, they traded for Antonio Morrison. They traded for BJ Goodson the last couple of years, trying to kind of plug and play. And I can see that repeating itself now that they have Kirksey. And once again, hoping Oren Burks lives up some of the expectation we'll see how kirksey pans out two games uh he he, in the past two years he only played nine games this over the last two seasons so there certainly is some injury concern at inside linebacker with kirksey there let's take a look ahead at 2019 packers that are currently free agents i'll put them up at the bottom of your screen there you can see the names on the ticker of the guys that are still free agents However, Jim, some of the bigger names there, Tremont Williams, cornerback, right tackle, Jared Valdir. I'll even throw in wide receiver, Geronimo Allison. Who is most likely of this group to return to the Packers in 2020? Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to go to the, I guess what you might call the bottom of the, the list. So I would say Tyler Irvin, um, Ibrahim Campbell, Malcolm Johnson, um, largely because those are kind of minimum deals, probably not a whole lot of interest around the league. Irvin might get some sniffs because of what he showed late, but I mean, not that he was a desirable product, you know, last year when he was, you know, could have been ahead by anybody. Um, Campbell largely because of when he's been healthy and played for Mike Patton here. Um, it's, it's looked okay. And Johnson, oh, look, Danny Vitale is an unrestricted free agent. And we know Mike, uh, Matt LaFleur loves the fullback spot. So even if Vitaly comes back, like they're still going to need another fullback or two maybe in camp. Um, obviously, people probably most want to know about Tremont Williams. Um, 
you know, Tremont, I think, did a radio appearance in, in Wisconsin not too long ago where that made it sound that if the Packers don't want him back, maybe he'll hang it up. So I don't know where he's at, right? Um, you know, if it's a kind of a one, like, return or nothing, or if he just wants to play. And I don't know. Um, Williams could be one of those where maybe that if he doesn't sign anywhere and they don't draft anyone um, – I can see that also happening. I, I don't think you bring Tremont Williams back to compete for anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you can bring that guy in and then, like, cut him. Does that make sense? I think that doesn't go well. Go, that wouldn't go over well. So I think, to me at least, Brian Gutekunz has to say, okay, if we bring him back, he's kind of got to be on the team. He's sure he can still play. I'm not saying that. Um, but do you or, – or at some point, does Josh Jackson need a role? Like, when do you – kind of turn the page. Um, and I'm curious if this is the year they do that with Tremont Williams, much like they did with Clay Matthews, Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson. It's a challenging decision to make for a player that's played in Green Bay the last his 10 seasons of his 13 in the NFL. So we'll see what Brian Gutekinds decides to do there. Now, let's move on to some of the positions that the Packers are going to have to address, whether it's in free agency or in the draft. I went back through some of the comments that some of you left on our live stream yesterday, especially a wide receiver. There seems to be a lot of questions about some of the remaining free agents out there. Some of the names that I saw come up quite a bit were Jets, former Jets wide receiver Robbie Anderson, former Bears wide receiver Taylor Gabriel, uh, former 49ers wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. Those are just some of the names that I saw. Who could be a possible target for the Packers if they decide to pursue a receiver in free agency. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. Um, you know, Gabriel, there's a tie to the offense, to the head coach from their time in Atlanta, you know, Anderson kind of fits a, a speed profile. Emmanuel Sanders fits a veteran um, offense profile. Obviously he kind of fit in, in San Francisco um, last year. He's an older guy that, that, I don't know if Ryan Gutekunst is going to go out and just sign guys in their mid-30s. I mean, I, I'm going to go with what the GM has said on that one, Olivia. He said their new approach to free agency is, you know, younger players who they feel are ascending. Um, I mean, Rick Wagner doesn't quite fit that mold, but I think that telegraphs the fact they're going to draft a tackle. Um, I don't know if they're going to sign receivers in their – late mid thirties, early thirties. Uh, so I'll just say that in terms of anybody else, the receiver market clearly is depressed. I mean, a, a, after Amari Cooper, the Stefan Diggs trade Hopkins trade, um, I mean, Randall Cobb sort of odd contract, which I don't know if Houston can count <laughs> anymore. Like if there's such an outlier now with the way they do business. Um, but clearly it, it, I mean, that market is falling because of how good the draft is. So I think I, I hesitate to pick a person Olivia clearly because it's there are so many guys available right now, um, including John Allison, who Matt LaFleur liked. I mean, he had a role. Um, it's just do they want him to reprise that in Green Bay? So um, I, I can't put a finger on it other than knowing they want to get faster. And now it's a matter of are you spending the money which means that guy's got to play and he's got to start? Or are you drafting a guy and you, you're kind of doing the developmental stuff with some lower tiered, lower salary people? Because frankly, you got to pay the quarterback. You got to um, maybe pay Aaron Jones. You know, um, you have to pay the left tackle in a year. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I can't pick a name just because there's so many available. And, and Ryan Gook, who's now has you know, quite a few options. Gutekunst has been very clear that he thinks this is going to be a very deep receivers draft. So expect the Packers to be looking for a receiver, not necessarily in, in one of the opening rounds of the draft, but perhaps later on. One of the issues that the Packers have right now, if they want to move forward in pursuing a free agent in this off season is that they're a little bit cap strapped right now. Yesterday, before the Mercedes Lewis signing and the Will Redmond signing, the Packers were about $14.7 million underneath the cap. Now, Lewis is back and Redmond are back, not for a ton of money. However, it shrinks that window even more. One of the options that the Packers have right now, if they wanted to free up some room 
would be to cut left guard Lane Taylor. It would release around $4 million in cap space in 2020. How likely is it that the Packers move on from Taylor? Yeah, this is the um, $4 million question, right? To me, if they were, if they felt they needed $4 million to sign an unrestricted free agent, they would have cut him with Jimmy Graham. Um, so obviously in their view, either A, they knew they didn't need that $4 million, um, So why just cut a good player? I mean, say what you want out of the competition with Elton Jenkins last year, he did come out of week one as a starter. Um, and he started for a long time. So there, there's that part of it. Um, why not see what he has left um, and try to do the Mike Daniels situation last year, Olivia, where, you know, Mike Daniels ended the previous year injured. So they tried to trade him. And then finally, when they got to camp, they realized, okay, we got to let him go. Um, so I can see that scenario happening. And then also, quite frankly, um, he may not be physically recovered yet. And if he can't pass a physical, they'd have to work out an injury settlement, uh, which may or may not, you know, defeat the purpose of trying to cut him to save money because you'd have to pay something out anyway. So um, I I think if they needed that money now, it would have happened already. Um, not to say it won't down the line, but I, I think that this is more of a down the line cap thing than a right now cap thing. All right, we'll see what ends up happening there if they end up deciding to let anyone else go. For now, this is what we're riding with. So let's move over to some of our questions over on the Facebook page. If you have any more, feel free to send them in. I'll take a look. We'll start with Rebecca. Rebecca asks, would a healthy Raven Green be able to help stop the run as a pseudo linebacker? We know that Mike Pettin likes to use use linebackers inside alongside Blake Martinez this past season. And primarily, we saw Ibrahim Campbell in that role after Raven Green got injured. What is the status of Raven Green in this Packers defense, seeing as we didn't get to see a whole lot of him last season? Yeah, clearly, you know, he had worked his way into a pretty substantial role. I mean, he really bulked up last offseason, um, and he was on the field quite a bit, I, I want to say, that those first – two weeks, you know, before he got hurt against Minnesota. And clearly the team really liked what he could have maybe done in the Super Bowl. The fact that they saved that sort of roster spot for him and brought him back, you know, at the very end of the playoffs. Um, you know, again, though, it's hard. So, but it's hard to project. Like their actions show that they like him and they obviously think he has potential. We just haven't seen it yet. Um, so, and then plus what status matters. And if they draft a safety, a similar type of guy, um, you know, that guy is going to probably have every chance to beat out Raven green. Um, but as of now though, I think, you know, he'll get a shot to be that kind of hybrid linebacker type that Mike Patton likes. Um, and we'll, we'll just have to see. Thank you, Rebecca, for your question. I appreciate it. I'm gonna pull up the next one here. We'll go with this. We discussed this a little bit earlier, Jim. Tristan asks, why do you think Brian Gutekinds hasn't made a move at wide receiver or tight end yet? Is there something he could be waiting for? We discussed wide receiver a little bit, but we haven't touched so much on tight end. As we mentioned earlier in the show, Mercedes Lewis is coming back on a one-year deal. He joins tight end Jay Sternberger, Robert Tanyan, and Evan Bayless as well. Four tight ends on the roster. How likely is it that Brian Gutekinds adds another tight end, whether it's in free agency or the draft? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Well, we'll start with free agency. You know, the tight end market was pretty bare, especially after Los Angeles franchise tag Hunter Henry, I'm sure. Austin Hooper's been discussed that look, the Packers were never going to reset the market again at tight end. They did that a couple years ago with Jimmy Graham. It didn't work. Not quite apples to apples there uh, based on age, but, you know, um, there had to be a little saltiness about kind of doing that and not getting your return. Um, 
there just wasn't, you know, Eric Ebron's out there. I mean, the longer these guys go without signing, the cheaper they get. Um, you know, especially now with everything being postponed, um, there's really no reason to sign anyone when you don't have to. So um, they may yet sign a different type of veteran tight end who has a pass catching, um, you know, pedigree like a Tyler Eifert or something like that. You know, to a, kind of a lower price deal um, to complement Mercedes Lewis, compete for a spot maybe. Um, but I can see the draft. You know, yet again, um, kind of replenishing it. Look, Robert Tanyan. You know, how how long are they going to wait? You know, um, it's been a few years now, and he has shown some potential, but what has he really done? And you know, you get a fourth, fifth round pick type of thing. It's probably not the worst thing in the world in this offense. George Kittle, fifth round pick. I think um, you know, Jordan Reed, Zach Ertz, those guys were not first rounders. So, you know, not that that's the new running back, but they can be had middle of the round. So I think that's might where that's maybe where a tight end you can maybe find a guy to, to add to the room um, that can contribute right away that you, you maybe don't have to spend a whole lot of money on. The Packers would have liked to have seen a little bit more of Robert Tanyan and Jay Sternberger last season. However, they both battled injuries and kept them off the field more than the Packers would have wanted to. So we'll see this season if they're able to stay healthy and stay productive on the field. Let's move on to another question. I had something and then it went away. Oh, here we go. It's Brian here. Jim, you can an answer this uh, if you want. <laughs> For uh, As Brian asks here, is it possible the Packers get Todd Gurley or pick up Clay Matthews? We addressed the Clay Matthews situation earlier in our show. Short answer is no. I think Todd Gurley, former Rams running back, is an interesting conversation just to have from the perspective of the fact that if the Packers want to re-sign Aaron Jones once his contract expires, how much money are they going to give him? Because with Gurley, we saw he gets released in a season when he's due $10.5 million. Gurley, face of the franchise, valuable piece of that offense. However, they weren't willing to pay that this season. With Aaron Jones, what are the Packers going to ultimately agree to pay him if they decide to keep him. Yeah, that's um, his situation is probably the most interesting of, of all um, coming up because he obviously wants to cash in. Um, in. Recent history, Todd Gurley included, shows that teams who pay running backs tend to regret it immediately. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and, and Gurley's not a fit to me in Green Bay, I mean, I, I mean, you're talking about a guy who still probably believes he's a number one back. And this isn't really a money thing. He's not going to be cheap. I know fans like to just automatically assume a guy who gets cut is going to be cheap and available. Um, I don't think that's a guy who's going to come in and be happy with playing 13 snaps or whatever. <laughs> I mean, Jamal Williams is still here. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's just not a roster fit. It's not a financial fit um, with Todd Gurley. Clay Matthews, we addressed at the top of the show. I don't I don't think that's a fit either uh, for a variety of reasons. I didn't mention this earlier, Olivia, though. Everyone seems to assume, like, Clay Matthews is going to want to play inside linebacker. Why would he – I don't understand why he would do that. That's not what he does. That's not what he's good at. And why? I don't know why everyone just assumes – it's a thing he would just gladly do. Um, so yeah, I, I yeah, I'm kind of out on those guys. Um, but Jones is the interesting one, just because. Look, I, here's the interesting. The the new CBA makes it so much harder for these guys to hold out now. That was their only leverage. Like if they were going to do anything, he could just not show up until the first week of the season to try to force anyone's hand. And now that's sort of been taken out of his playbook so to speak so um i don't know if they have to pay him you know what i mean i like and, and they can try to go to unrestricted next year at this time and see what see what happens because clearly running back markets are deflating and it might be in the packers best interest to not explore it um but we'll see i mean he's a good guy and good player um but that's the most interesting uh contract decision i guess coming up or, or that they have to work on going forward. 
Todd Gurley may not be a fit. However, looking at the running backs that are currently on the Packers roster, obviously Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, and then there's also Dexter Williams, who the Packers drafted late in the draft last year. We did not get to see any of Dexter Williams. He did not play for the most part. I think he got a few snaps in a couple games, but for the most part, it was a Dexter Williams quiet season. How likely is it that the Packers will look to add another running back in the draft this season? Yeah, I, I mean, it's possible for sure. Um, Matt LaFleur, I want to say at the Combine, talked about um, adding a third back into the rotation. You know, Aaron Jones made it through the year healthy. Jamal Williams did not miss time. Um, it's a position that's going to get used up a lot, and especially, let's say they actually repeat the season, right, and have 13-3 and win a division. They're still going to play another game, you know, the game they didn't have to play last year uh, with no buy. So you're – you potentially are playing 20 games um, now. So I guess I could see running back competition coming in. Dexter Williams looked good when he actually ran the ball. Uh, all the other issues are what kept him off the field, at, you know, catching, route running, blocking. Um, so I think he's got a battle um, this off season to see if he can make the team. Thank you for your question, Brian. It was a good discussion point talking about Todd Gurley and Aaron Jones. <laughs> We've got, John reminds me, very good point, John. He reminds us that James Looney is a tight end now, technically. <laughs> James right. Loon, Looney, former defensive lineman for the Packers. Yes, he is now technically a tight end. The Packers converted him over. He began practicing with the tight ends toward the end of last season. It's been one of those notes written down in my notebook for next season that I'm really looking forward to talking to James Looney about because he's a practice squad guy. We can't talk to them during the season. So now once he's on the big 90 man roster, we can finally ask him about his endeavors at tight end. What are your expectations for James Looney at tight end with the Packers, Jim? Um, I have no expectations. I mean, it is a great question. And this is why Packers fans are so great. I doubt many uh, of our colleagues around the country are being asked about practice squad players who change positions during the year. <laughs> so John, I give you all the credit in the world for that. Um, no, I don't look, I mean, he was an undrafted defensive lineman for a reason. Um, they made him to a tight end for a reason, which to me means he couldn't cut it as a, a D lineman. They thought maybe there's some ability if he changes positions and, and maybe um, he can be what Evan Bayless was last year, like the fourth, fifth guy that they kind of shuttle back and forth. But I don't have much of an expectation for him. And if you can hear my dog, Dosha, uh, she's making sure the social distancing continues <laughs> by the squirrels not getting in our house. So I'm sure she'll stop soon, hopefully. <laughs> well, she agrees with you, Jim. She yes. agrees. She, she doesn't, doesn't have any expectations for uh, – for James Looney either. <laughs> that's all good. It's actually great timing because I think that's going to do it for us today, everyone. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your great questions. If we did not get to your questions, hopefully next time we can get to it. Make sure you come back. Same time, same place tomorrow. Also, make sure you're checking out Packers News. All of our great content regarding free agency is up on there so you can check it out. Jim has been doing a fantastic job with the free agent tracker, Jim. Thank you for all of your contributions there, making sure we're all squared away and keeping track of what's exactly going on in free agency. So everyone have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you next time. See you.